So I'm recording this after the other part. It's a little addendum, but I'm going to put it at the beginning um, to put, you know, a little bit of a positive uh, segue into what's really a very negative topic, um, something that needs to be talked about, something I'm very angry about. Um, but for me to even have and be where I am with my anger, uh, anger ta- to be angry takes a lot of energy. And some of us are so broken that we can't, that it's just you're stuck in depression. Um, and the very energy level with which you need to be able to resist uh, isn't there. Um, so really, I guess for me, um, I'm underweight, so it might not work exactly the same. But for those of you who find yourself eating convenient uh, processed foods um, and you think you're a bit overweight, um, so you're not at exactly the same spot that I I was um, or am because I'm still underweight, um, but you might especially benefit. And I've been doing it. And and in general, it does make me feel better. But sometimes then I really have to bulk up with my other meals. Um, Intermittent fasting. Um, so you might find yourself having more energy if you actually cut back on food because the, the foods that we're eating, they're, they're really just giving our bodies a, a hard time to deal with and we don't really extract much out of them. Um, it's not, it's, it's food of, it's cage food, it's prison food. Um, so I know it costs more money. Um, But hopefully I'm going to suggest, I think, rather angrily things that we could do to save time and money that we need to do if we're going to be able to effectively resist. Um, Because if not, then we become passive acceptors of of the many layers of oppression. So the things that we're going to need to, um, you know, that we're going to need to do will be saving us money, which will allow you to buy healthier food. And maybe even have the time to grow your own food some of the year, which is obviously going to be much healthier, much fresher. So um, anyways, I wanted to add that on at at the beginning that um, like we have so much to do and to do it on a bad source of food is going to almost preclude it from being effective. So you have to really get your health. Well, in my opinion, you have to get your healthy fats which might be like uh, fish oils, the good ones, good quality ones. I think I do Nordic Naturals. I think that's healthy. Um, But more than that, just eating salmon um, that's been caught in the wild and um, cooking with butter, never using vegetable oils, The basically like the paleo thing um, with some modifications and eating healthy uh, organic as much as you can. So it does cost a lot. Um, and I'm finding it to cost a lot, but it's not yet prohibitive. Um, but if I lose my job or leave my job, which may happen very soon, it might become cost prohibitive, but hopefully I'll have other ways of cutting back time and money investments and things that really don't serve me. Um, like a cell phone, like, uh, service for things we already don't get cable service we just have internet service maybe i'll whittle that down to a slower speed and save you know 20 bucks a month that's a bottle of uh of uh cod liver oil that now i can buy because that's what it costs i think it's 19.99 um actually might be 23.99 but anyways i could almost buy that so um and I, i go through that once every two months so actually then i could definitely afford that So there's lots that needs to be done, but thinking about your diet um, and things within your very local context that you can control, like your thinking patterns and cognitive behavioral therapy, as rigid and as oppressive as it may seem, um, it may help stave off other oppressive, more oppressive sort of behavioral habits of thought. Um, And I do think thinking is a behavior. I know uh, people say, oh, you can't see it, so it's not a behavior. I think that's a a sophomoric way to look at it, in my opinion. All right, um, so here's the rest of the 
lecture. Uh, I guess it is a lecture. Nobody else is talking. But hopefully um, we can have a dis discourse about these things and help each other out. Because even though it's sunny right now, it's, uh, I think, some unfun times are ahead. All right. All right, I have a lot that I've been thinking and that I want to say. I'm going to see if I can convert what's the thoughts in my head into uh, a linear language uh, spoken. At least it's tonal and I could stress things and slow and speed. Uh, writing's even more hard for that very reason for me um, and takes even longer and is even more inefficient. So hopefully this will get some of this out. Um, so... The degrees and the extensiveness on many levels and across many geographies on this, the context of our planet, um, the oppression is just overwhelming for me to bear and to just, you know, silently sit with. Um, I am not the only one who's aware of this. Probably a lot of people that have influenced me have helped um, lead me in this path and have led themselves in the same path to see the how overarching the the problems are um, and it's that's a big problem that it's centered in individuals that it's sent that this information is centered in an individual um, it really needs to be if if it's going to go anywhere it really needs to be in a movement it needs to be um, because it's a huge burden to bear this. I don't even know if I can bear it much longer. Um, it's breaking me. It's I feel it. I'm so sensitive to it. It's more than just the visceral hypersensitivity. It's more than just O negative blood type, um, which I'm not even sure if that does play a role. It's just a theory I have. Um, but being so aware of the oppression and so acutely sensitive to it is a lot for any single person to bear and um and and it the logical outcome is that we're not going to be able to bear it forever um we're going to be broken we're going to be swept into and silenced by death and history and um you know even there may be no victors there there may be no life like it's fucking insane how far the logic of civilization has destroyed so much of nature, so much of what we are, um, and has just made it ridiculously hard to endure, depending on your context. Um, some people are in havens now, which may be gone very quickly in, in the evolving context that we find ourselves in. Um, so what can we do? I think there's lots we can do, lots upon lots upon lots. Um, first of all, you got to figure out what you're strong at, and that includes what you're passionate about, because if you're passionate about it, you're innately stronger at it. So even if it's something that you're clumsy at, like art, which I find myself clumsy at, I'm very passionate about it, and I think that um, doesn't make up for the clumsiness or the, the lack of skill, but it's certainly gets my skills better very quickly but it also it comes through so it's so nothing we're going to do is going to be perfect and we don't need to restrict ourselves and this is what I'm telling myself more than even you dear listener is 
because I, I withhold things because they're not exactly perfect. Eh, and and who's, who knows what kind of oppression that is on me that I bear, that I withhold things until they're perfect, like where that OCD came from, what generated it, what inheritance um, that I'm enduring. Um, so to end this part of the thought is that I think we need a movement. We need a group of people that are going to bear these things together. Um, we need to be as closely intertwined as possible. That means living together or living next to each other, um, supporting each other, hugging, holding, sharing food, car libraries, um, not using cars, sharing yard space, having yard space, um, interacting with animals. Just we we can't let ourselves fall into the. I'm gonna go watch Game of Thrones. I'm gonna go watch repeats of Game of Thrones um, because it's not the season now. We can't as much, and we may learn things along the way. We may go listen to lectures. We may listen to podcasts. Um, we may produce podcasts, but we need to get more connected or else I, I think we're fucked. It just feels like we're fucked. And I, I think that if I had some other people around me that I could see visibly remind, reminded that I'm, I know there's many of you out there fighting right now, fighting harder and more effectively than me. I need to see that. I can't not be around that and just remember that there's people fighting, that there once was a Che Guevara and there are now um, kinsmen or whatever uh, spawn of him out there, whether literally or figuratively taking up the sort of flag, the anti-authoritarian flag, the um, which I said Che, but obviously you could debate about that. But like, you know, the was it the EZLN? Um, these different groups of indigenous people fighting back, um, fighting against the machines. So, um, so we need each other, I think, to, to know that it's worth to keep fighting. That'll help the sun rise higher for all of us and brighter. Um, because to be isolated is, is to be, uh, the re is to be a product of the logic of civilization and, I think we need to break that down very quickly. And we really need to be able to realize what is getting in the way of our liberation, be able to really purge that out. Like the television series that are so um, seductive, like the movies, like our smartphones, like our cars. Um, with what resources we do have, as limited as they are, I think we have to really evaluate how we're using them. And remember, every mile you drive, in terms of an investment, you're spending, over, if it's a sedan, it's like 50 or 60 cents a mile because of the initial output of the car, maintenance of the car. So don't just think of your mileage as gas. Like these things do wear you down monetarily. Um, money wears us down monetarily as well as emotionally and, and many other ways. Um, so I just had to get that out. Um, who knows if I'll even publish this. Even doing that is like a task. It's like a chore. As it gets colder, as the sunlight dims, as the fears of like... Okay, so here's another thing. Um, disease. We're obviously plagued by a huge amount of autoimmune disease, which in a certain way I think you could say... Um, it's not unrelated to high levels of autism and, and just general childhood psychiatric issues um, because we're, our immune systems are inundated by heavy metals, which there's so much evidence that that's a main cause of autism. Um, but as weak as our immune systems are, we're still surviving either by the medicine and the, the contained environments and the way, but, you know, people drop here and there. It's like a chicken farm. Um, you know, you might have a thousand chickens and every day you're going to find like one or two that died off. But as long as you get most of them through the six weeks or eight weeks or whatever, 
until you're ready to slaughter them, then, you know, you still are able to get to that point of productivity. So humans are dying off slowly and there's tons of excuses of why, like we've built into our system tons of excuses and, and, and have divided them so nothing is glaring at you. You you see like, oh, a, th a million people died last year of this, 100,000 died of this, 300,000, and then you add it all up and it's like tens of millions of people if you go around the world. Um, but they're all thought of as separate phenomena. So that's a, a tangent in and of itself, pursuing that and how we could make that frame that as, no, it's all related to the same fucking thing. Um, <clears throat> but science has just chosen to make it different. The scientific mind, the uh, logical, rational, capitalist mind has chosen to divide it. Um, and therefore you conquer the anxiety of it and the awareness of it, of the connectedness of it. Um, but, um, right now our immune systems are like awful. So all it's going to take, and this is in any, con I don't know where people are healthy. I, I'm sure there's some isolated populations that are healthy, but all it's going to take, it's, it's going to be some disease, new bacteria, strain of bacteria, or, um, and it doesn't have to be, even be intentional. It could be that, you know, the powers that be might want it to happen and then they're not going to put in a wholehearted effort to stop it. Um, or there might be a, a supply chain, like the supply chain is so way overstretched, a supply chain breakdown. Um, a food could cause starvation, but maybe there's a supply chain shortage of medicine um of antibiotics like these things will tear right fucking through us they're not even diseases humans have normally I, i'm thinking that there'll be they won't even be diseases humans have had really any contact with um those diseases have been beaten down so low along with our immune system because they might have um stimulated our immune system and now they're not stimulating them because we don't allow them we don't give them the chance um we're just sitting ducks. We're like fucked, if anything, really. The, the only thing in the American context, which I feel like I know something about, is that we do have a lot of people, 300 million, but we're spread out, relatively speaking, over a wide range. So a lot of cities might be hit hard, um, which is where I guess probably around half of us live. Um, but the other half that aren't living in urban and suburban areas might be okay um from that wave but after that wave runs through so many other things are going to break down food systems civil civil law the guns are going to come out um people that weren't farmers are going to oppress other people who do know something about growing or they're going to die but they're going to go down shooting and that means lots and lots collateral damage will cause collateral damage will cause collateral damage so Obviously, I can't predict how it's going to play out, but the fact that we have let ourselves get this vulnerable is the disease. Basically, we're already dead in a, in a large way, if you think of life as a whole on the planet, or at least as far as humans. I'd like to think that those things lower on the food chain are resilient and can endure this even if they they reach a bottleneck of population. I think hopefully they'll at least still be able to squeeze through. Um but humans in general, and I don't, there's some that are super prepared that will endure, and they might be the bottleneck that uh, allows people to endure this, this storm this, that we've created, that our ancestors have created. I'm not even, I don't blame myself anymore that much. I blame myself if, I w if I'm not doing this podcast, if I'm not planning on going out there and raising my fist in the air in defiance if I'm not planning on trying to destabilize infrastructure um, that oppresses us. But I was born in, into a highly, I was born in 83, so I was born into an already highly progressed state of civilization. And, and so were most of you. Um, the oldest people out there, the ones that were alive during World War II, I have so much anger at them. And I don't think it's misdirected. 
I think a lot of them were aware of problems. There's glaring to them if they were had any kind of consciousness during World War II. And then they chose to just like propagate civilization and just go down the suburban r route and let the government build these awful highways. And and lots of them went to work for Ford and Chevy and, and then whatever companies came after that. Um, pathetic, absolutely pathetic. They're not the greatest generation. They're the greatest to blame that are still alive. And them and a few generations before them, and maybe the baby boomers after them, I am so fucking angry. I am so fucking angry at them. What a bunch of selfish fucking assholes. And now they're on retirement. They think they've worked hard their whole life, so they deserve to retire. They've built in this whole cliche. Like, I, I'm not saying they don't deserve to live, but but maybe I am saying that, like that meme. I, I, I'm not going to go around killing them. But shame on them. And I hope you don't go around thinking and listening and, and saying that they need, because th that's not going to solve anything. They do not, we do not need to, but I think our anger is legitimate. It's more legitimate than any of these fucking laws floating around, than any of these fucking corporations floating around. They are what these people gave birth to, to this corporate takeover of everything. It's, f it's fucking pathetic. And I'm not saying I'm not pathetic. I, I'm a, I'm a whittled down animal. I'm domesticated, I'm underslept, the quality of my sleep is shot, the meaning of my life, the purpose is the only thing I have to cling on to, which is making myself seem like this superhero to myself that I have to fight this oppression everywhere and all the time, but it fucking wears you down. But the opposite is not giving it your all, and then we that might not be enough to turn the tide then we might all just be dead. So, sorry for the depressing thing, but I'm not going to bullshit. I'm not going to lie. Uh, too many people bullshit their way through this, and then, then there's going to be a moment when they're, when they're about to die. And it might be a very horrible death. Their kids might be dying in front of them. There might be lots of people being shot or hit by disease or hit by cars or waves of water, bad storms. They will wish they did something now, at this point, because we can't go backwards. We can't go back in the past of doing a thing. So we have to do something now. That's the only choice to us, and it's a very powerful choice. But it might mean quitting your job, stopping being part of the problem. It might mean freeing that time up for yourself and really learning how to grow your own food or how to find food in the wild and how to protect the wild because that's – that's the safety net. The safety net is are those those trees out there, those plants that are always fucking overlooked. And they're cut down. Development coming. No, that means cancer is spreading. Every time I see, oh, 10,000 uh, whatever um, coming, some kind of development, and there'll be all this office space or there'll be, um, you know, 300 homes available. I see death. And that's what it is. It's death. I'm aware of that oppression. I hope you are too. Because if not, it's going to result in our own death. We are way too high on the food chain for this shit to be able to keep going without us being affected. Bye. I love you.